Hey everyone, welcome back to another PNS overview. Today we're taking a look at the new, to put it lightly, controversial Andrea the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Hey, we look at that. It's not a Jurassic World review for once. I feel like I've been doing those a lot lately. Part of the reason is I've been waiting for some of my PNSO stuff to come in from Amazon and they've been taking forever. Finally, Andrea showed up yesterday and I'm happy to finally have her. I feel like everyone else got her before me. Mine got held up for some reason. Usually Amazon's really quick delivering these, but you know this one and their uh, Nano Tyrannus or Juvenile T-Rex, whatever you want to call it, uh, have took a really long time to get to me. I still haven't even gotten that Nano Tyrannus yet. Hopefully that will show up in the next couple of days. So it seems like PNSO is going a little T-Rex crazy as of late. You know, we have Andrea. They released that critically acclaimed Wilson that came out at the beginning of the year, a figure that I absolutely love. And we have that juvenile T-Rex to complete that little family set. So T-Rex sells, so I kind of understand why PNSO was doing this, but I much prefer you know new species that haven't been made into figure form to be coming from them. But uh, it is nice to have a T-Rex family group. Now, as far as the execution of Andrea, um, I am still kind of on the fence about it. I just really, really don't know how I feel about this figure. But anyway, she retails for the whopping price of $65. I ended up getting her off of Amazon. She, you know, passed through a wormhole, disappeared into a black hole and took, you know, a really long time to get here. But I'll leave that Amazon link down below in the description if you want to order one for yourself. So this review is going to be a little hard for me to get through. I, for the most part, love PNF, so I think they do fantastic figures, some of the best on the market. But this one is just bugging me for some reason. There's things I like about it, but there's more things I don't like about it. So I'm going to need a little help getting through this review. I'm just going to take out this beer right here, and I'll be sipping through this on this while I get through this review, because I just need a little help getting through here with Andrea. She's just... Such a big girl to, you know, take in. I just need a little help. I'll just drink this peanut butter marshmallow stout. What is this thing? 10.4%. I am going to be a pain in the butt to my wife tonight. So anyways, let's move on with the review. So let's just go with the package really quick before we look at our chunky girl, Andrea. You have a nice picture of Andrea in that sitting position on the front of the box. This figure is part of the Dinosaur Museum line, which is more of a high quality line of PNSO figures. Even though some of their later uh, prehistoric animal model figures feel on par with their museum line, so that with the museum line comes a higher price point, but you also get much nicer packaging. This is a nice cardboard box, all done in white. You have that, you know, that nice picture of the Andrea on the front. It has the foam insert to protect the figure, you know, 135 scale. You know, the figure isn't 135 scale. And on the back right here, you have some information in Chinese and then you get a nice pamphlet right here with some info about Tyrannosaurus Rex. So let's just thumb through this really quick. Here's a beautiful picture of Andrea and then on this page we have a nice close-up of her face and then on this one we have her face open and man does that picture bother me because I have some things to say about the articulation on this figure and then right here we have some nice artwork of Andrea with a nest with a baby T-Rex hatching. Huge, huge missed opportunity for Andrea not coming with a nest or at least a baby Tyrannosaurus. I, I just really wish PNSO kind of did it like they did with the Stegosaurus. You know, you got the baby and the adult. I just I would have paid ten dollars more if this thing came with a nest or a baby T Rex figure. I just I don't feel like it's just a waste unless they have a nest and baby set coming out. But who who knows? And we have a nice skeletal of T Rex in that sitting position. Now take a look at how the legs are positioned as I slam my camera. Um, just remember how this looks because the way the skeletal is does not translate to how the actual figure is sculpted. The legs are in a totally different position and that's one of the big issues I have with this figure. And let's just go to the last couple pages so we can finish this up. Here's another artwork with T-Rex. For some reason, when PNSO does their artwork, they like to get T-Rex like a little mane of feathers. Uh, I'm fine with them not including it on the figures. I think it just looks better without that, but their artwork is also really nice. And let's see, one more picture of Andrea's mug, and that will do it for the pamphlet. Let's get Andrea up on that turntable and take a closer look. 
All right, let's start with a nice 360 degree view of the big girl, Andrea. First off, I like the pose. You don't see a lot of mainstream dinosaur companies sculpting their figures in a resting pose. Everyone does everything in a standard walking pose or maybe slightly crouched. So this is a breath of fresh air to see a dinosaur resting. Now, one thing I don't like about the pose is just the position of the legs. They're really bothering me. They don't look natural. It looks like the poor girl broke her legs sitting down, but we'll get into that a little bit later. Now, obviously, the big comparison is comparing her to Wilson, which we'll bring out very shortly. She does have much finer scales. I know a lot of people complained about the oversized scales on Wilson. I actually like the bigger scales on Wilson. Gave the figure a nice textured feel to it. On here, her scales are very subtle, very fine, which is much more accurate, but makes the figure look less detailed in my eyes, unless you look up at look at it really up close uh the stripes on her back are a little bit more subdued compared to wilson they're a little bit uh more uh darker on him because she's supposed to represent a female wilson's supposed to represent a male so maybe males had darker stripes so that's okay but uh there's some missing paint apps on her that are on wilson which is also kind of bothering me and i've seen some other people post their in hand uh copies of this figure online and the paint scheme seems to be all over the place i saw someone post one the thing barely had any stripes on it. So there's definitely some weird quality control issues going on at PNSO with Andrea. The paint scheme seems to be all over the place. I've seen, you know, nice stripes on mine like this to in between to almost no stripes at all. So that is a little bit of a concern. But uh, so let's pop her off the turntable and take a closer look at her. So I can point out a couple of her chunky little flaws. All right, let's just do a couple quick measurements. Now, if you measure Andrea, along the curve of her neck and curve of her tail. She's actually a 12 inch long figure. She doesn't look like that because her tail is mostly sweeping to the side. And she's just about two and three quarter inches tall to the top of her hips. So in real life T-Rex was just over 40 feet long. So I'll put her in the 140 scale range. All right, let's zoom and take a look at some of the finer details on Andrea styling with this really nice head sculpt, just like Wilson, a beautiful profile of a t-rex skull really well done now you'll notice that this figure does not have lips that's because penis was going on to say that they don't think theropod dinosaur has lips unless it's their yanchoanosaurus or giganotosaurus figure you see that the head is covered in all these large scales uh like i said in my wilson review the sculptor said that you know these scales are reminiscent of the pressure scales found on crocodiles and alligators you can see you can see some pressure pits sculpted in on here i know some people think these scales are too large but i think you would lose that detail if these were shrunk down a little bit so the size of these scales really don't bother me you can see her eye is painted yellow with a black pupil the teeth are painted a nice white color and there's a little bit of a yellow uh, dry brush over to give it that black look all these large scales are done in black and you have this brown wash over it to look give it that uh caked up dirt look between the scales which is also a nice touch then you have some dark brown on the fenestra and the orbit and then let's just open the mouth up and inside the mouth we have some beautiful beautiful looking detail nice detailed tongue pretty cool that my andrea came with a tongue that is a joke for those who remember my uh wilson review it has a nice gloss coat on it to give it that wet look you have some nice detail along the gums and let's turn the figure over and you get some nice details inside the mouth i always love the inclusion of the nasal passages on the roof of the mouth that's a touch i will always always appreciate you can see the nostrils have a little bit of that brown uh wash caked up in there kind of makes it look like there's some dirt got stuck up in the nostril and let's look at her from the top you got some all those large scales done in black and let's look at it from the front you got that nice t-rex binocular vision and obviously you'll notice this figure does have an articulated jaw this is about as wide as the jaw will open and it closes pretty flush penis was going a lot better with the articulated jaw they're on par with papo i always say it papo has some of the best articulated jaws in the business but one thing about this jaw that really bugs me you know you can open it up this far but since i'm holding the figure up yeah it looks really cool and everything but once you put it down on the ground it shuts the mouth will not stay open while the figure is in its resting position so for me, the jaw articulation is pretty much pointless. Now you can get all creative and put this figure like on a base. This is uh, one of the bases that came with one of the Vitae figures and you'll have the T-Rex resting on it. And you can open up the mouth a little bit, but the figure does not come with a base. So, you know, if you're going to display it on your shelf like that, like I said, the articulation is just 
pretty much pointless on there. So, I mean, I do appreciate that they gave the figure an, an articulated jaw, but usually when these figures, you know, have more parts because of the articulation, they go up in cost. I just think the if they did not put an articulated jaw in here, uh, the figure probably would have cost a little bit less, but, you know, not much. So, yeah, I mean, you're really not going to get any use out of this jaw by just, you know, keeping her on a flat surface. So, like I said, kind of pointless. Now, let's go down to the body. You'll notice the scales on her are much sp smaller and in scale compared to Wilson. Uh, I'll take them out a little bit to show you the differences. You can see all these nice, fine, pebble-like scales. Lots of nice folds and wrinkles that really convey, like, the animal's resting. Uh, they did a good job with that. You get some large osteoderms. Uh, right above the shoulder, you got the really tiny puny arms right here, and they're tucked underneath Andrea. Now, on Wilson, the hand claws are painted in white. Same thing with the toe claws on Wilson, they're painted in white. For some reason, on this figure, they're not painted white. Uh, I don't know why they left that out. I just feel like uh, the figure is just missing a couple of paint apps, which is kind of a shame because you're paying like $65, $70 for this thing. And let's flip her over and take a look. At her underside, you have a nice uh, light coat underneath there. A little bit of uh, pink shading on the sides of the belly. You can see the huge pubic bone right here, which is where if T-Rex was sitting down, all that weight would be pressed along the pubic bone. So it's nice to see that nicely sculpted in. You got some nice detail along the feet right here, especially in the bottom of the toes. You have this row of large scales uh, on the backside of the metatarsals. Uh, they're really not that prominent on Wilson, so it's kind of odd. It's like really weird transition of large scales on there, but I think it does look cool, but it does, definitely does not match up uh, how they look at the on uh, the back legs of Wilson. Now, there's more detail on this foot. You go down to this foot right here. The detail is a little bit more subdued, and now turn her over to the side. This is the big, big issue I have with this figure. Just the whole position of the legs just looks very, very unnatural to me. Like I said earlier, when I showed you the picture of that skeletal, the position of the femur, uh, tibia, fibia, and metatarsals were in a totally different position, and it looked much more natural. But for some reason, when they sculpted this figure, just the angles are all off, and like these two, right, the uh, metatarsal and the tibia, fibia, are just parallel with each other. And just to me, it looks like this thing dislocated its leg or possibly broke its leg sitting down. It just should be like... The knees should be a little higher up here just uh, so they're just not resting on top of each other. Just looks very unnatural in my opinion. And I'm much more critical of PNSO than other companies because they put a lot of research into their figures. So when something doesn't look right, I'm definitely going to call them out on it. And this is just really, really bugging me. It's just this leg and just the articulation on the jaw are just kind of driving me nuts on this figure. And let's flip her over to her back. I'll flip her the other way because the way her tail... Uh, Benz, you can see all that dark striping on her neck and back, and that striping goes all the way down to the very tip of her tail. You can see all those finely sculpted details, uh, the, uh, sorry, finely sculpted scales. Um, you know, they're so fine, you know, from a distance, the toy looks very plain and flat looking. I much prefer the oversized scales on the original Wilson. I just like that texture look. And it just makes the paint apps look a lot better. So here's the other leg on the other side. This position of this leg really doesn't bother me as the other side. But still, you know, a little awkward looking. But, you know, definitely nice muscle tone and definition. A lot of nice folds and wrinkles, you know, to convey the rest of the position of this figure. But same thing, the, the toe claws are not painted white like they were on Wilson. I have no clue why they left those paint apps off. And then going down to the tail, tail has a nice curve to it, which would have been perfect to have like a nest next to it or, you know, a juvenile T-Rex figure, but, you know, but whatever. Uh, I got some nice thick muscles at the base of the tail. Let's get my camera to focus in on that. You can see all those fine scales and all those dark stripes. And let's just turn it over the other way. And you can see the underneath of the tail has some nice fine scale detail going all the way down to the tip so yeah she's uh definitely a very very interesting looking figure um i like her uh i don't love her i like the original wilson better but uh yeah definitely uh something different moving on to comparisons here it is with wilson the male t-rex and you know from this angle andrea looks a lot bigger and bulkier than wilson uh, she's definitely chunkier and a little bit wider than him, but he's actually longer than her. She measures about 12 inches, and he measures about 13 and a half inches. 
Now, the other thing, like I said, she looks a lot bigger. They weigh almost exactly the same amount, even though like she has a much wider body. She clocks in at 411 grams and Wilson clocks in at 407 grams, which is kind of odd. Maybe that, you know, a few extra grams comes from the extra length of Wilson. But if I put these two next to each other, you can see Andrea has a much bigger girth than Wilson, which is kind of cool. It shows some sexual dimorphism between these two figures, even though there is no evidence of sexual dimorphism among Tyrannosaurus. It's just assumed that the larger individuals are mature females and the leaner mature individuals are males, but that is yet to be decided. So let me just put these two figures next to each other and you can see how their heads uh, stack up as I'm like miserably, miserably failing at this. And there we go. Uh, Wilson and Andrea's heads are pretty much identical to each other. The same texture and, and same size scales are on both figures. But like I said, like the midsection and hind legs of Andrea and tail are much thicker on her than it is on Wilson. And obviously you can see the large scales uh, on Wilson compared to Andrea. I actually, you know, if I only could pick one of these, Wilson would be my top pick. I know a lot of people wanted... Uh, you know, Wilson sculpted in smaller scales. I'm fine with the scales on him. It does not bother me at all. I'd rather have that nice texture in. I think it just looks much better. I think it really, even though the, the, both these figures share pretty much the exact same uh, paint apps, I just think the details look much better on Wilson because of those larger scales. It just gives a lot more depth to it versus Andrea. And like I said a couple times in the review, like if you look at Wilson right here, you know, he has white paint on his toes and you know front limbs she does not i just don't know why p and so did that it's not like that uh the white claws is a sexual dimorphic trait it's just i don't know i just feel like they got a little little lazy with her and next up here is p and so's uh first attempt at t-rex they're really 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 anorexic looking first wilson oh, i'm still so mad about this version 3.0 came out a couple months before the new Wilson came out. I just feel like Pete Nessel did me dirty on that one. I would definitely would not have bought this if I knew they had a much more accurate T-Rex coming out. Still a little salty about that. And another T-Rex figure here is, uh, let me turn it this way so it looks a little bit better. Here it is with the Safari LTD Feather T-Rex. And next up here it is with their very chunky Tyrannosaurus. Pete Nessel definitely loves their chunky Tyrannosaurs, and I know that bothers some people, but I really like the heft on these figures. It just really makes them stand out from what everyone else is doing. And next up, here it is with PNSO's Carcharodontosaurus. And here it is with their juvenile Spinosaurus. They've been posting a lot of uh, Spinosaurus stuff lately on their Facebook page. I don't know if they're coming out with recolor of their larger Spinosaurus model. If they have a new updated larger version, I kind of hope not. I, I really want new species. You know, everyone does a Spinosaurus. I mean, maybe a year from now, I'll be okay if they release a larger version of their Spinosaurus, but just not right now. I just kind of want something different. And here it is with their Parasaurolophus. I, I wonder when we're gonna get like an Amontosaurus from PNSO. I'd love to see their take on some different hatches, so especially Sorolophus. That has been a top want for me for years now. I'll never stop saying it until I get my definitive Sorolophus for my collection. And here she is with PNSO's Triceratops. And lastly, here's a couple other resting position dinosaur figures. Here is Collecte's Dasterposaurus, and here's Wild Pass Teti. Sajaros, and I do really like dinosaurs in resting positions. I think it really enhances your dinosaur displays, and it just looks really cool. Display the other figures, they, you know, they always don't have to be walking around hunting and stalking, so it is refreshing to see, you know, a T-Rex sculpted in this position. I just wish the execution was just a tiny, tiny bit better. So, final thoughts on Sidami Mommy Andrea. I think she's a mixed bag. Well, for me. Uh, personally there's some people that really love her there's some people that just don't like her at all and there's a bunch of us that are kind of middle of the road and that's where she sits with me she's just a middle of the road pnso release you know the negative is i just think the jaw articulation is completely pointless i don't like the position of the hind legs uh the paint scheme 
uh, is okay. It's just, you know, those really, really fine scales just make it look a lo really plain and matte looking. It just looks better on the over textured uh, Wilson. I just think it just makes like the paint scheme pop with like all those nice, you know, large enhanced scales. But, uh, you know, if you're looking for something different, she's not a bad figure. I don't regret getting her. I really want to complete a T Rex family group. I can't wait till I get the juvenile T Rex in. And hopefully, you know, somewhere in the future, you know, PNSO has maybe a nest with a couple bait, like couple chick T Rexes in it just to complete the whole, like, you know, family picture. I think that'd be really cool if, you know, there's a bunch of releases you just form this really nice looking diorama. But um, she's just okay in my book. You know, the positive is I like the head sculpt on her. The eyes look great. The teeth are nicely painted. That mock detail is fantastic. I just love all those rough textures on her nose and just like that caked up dirt look between the scales on her. It's not really, really neat looking. But uh, other than that, uh, just the, the 65 bucks was kind of hard to swallow on her. I just, uh, I just feel like Wilson is just so much superior to her. I know some people are not going to like me saying that, but it is just my opinion. If you love her, that's fine. That's your opinion. I'm just a guy sitting in a room reviewing dinosaur figures and people are watching it. So that's really all it is. And like I said to begin the review, I got this figure from Amazon. It took forever and a day to get here. Link to that Amazon listing is down below in the description. So that will do it for the review. Still waiting on that Juvenile T-Rex. Once that comes in, I'll be reviewing that. And I'm actually really looking forward to their uh, upgraded Mementisaurus. I am a huge sucker for sauropods and I'm looking forward to that. And hopefully them redoing the Mementisaurus means there's more sauropods in the future. That's something uh, PNSO has been lacking lately is sauropods and they're my favorite species of dinosaurs. I really hope they do a few different ones, especially species that have not been made in the figure form before. I would really, really love that. And I still have a few Jurassic World figures I still need to review, so be on the lookout for those reviews in the near future. And as always, if you're enjoying the content on the channel, show your support by hitting that subscription button just below the video. Each subscription helps out the channel tremendously, and it's greatly appreciated. I'll see you guys for the next one. Now I need to finish this beer and go aggravate my wife. See you guys later.